Urban wetlands. They are providing habitat for thousands of species. Improved the runoff quality from urban catchments. Such beauty and sensitivity. Uh, Sydney is one of the most beautiful cities around the world and is famous for its beautiful harbors and beaches. People here are very protective of their environment, especially the waterways. Since uh, the very first time that uh, water-sensitive urban design was introduced in 1990s, uh, Council used their due diligence to protect their waterways. Black Marival is uh, located at the heart of the city and is surrounded by beautiful waterways, which makes it perfect habitat for local vegetation and small animals. The new construction project at Black Marival makes the wetland condition even better. Black Oval wetland was originally a wetland built for the motorway construction next door. It was a silt pond for that project and at the end of the project they just left it fenced off, full of silt, no longer operating as a wetland, no longer doing filtration of the, the water and so on. So the council decided to reactivate the operation of the pond so that all the water running off from that catchment could be polished by the pond before it goes into the harbour. The problem was we didn't own the land. It took many years to get the land because it was held up. Motorway projects possibly going to use it. Eventually they decided they weren't going to use it and they handed the land over to us. Council got a, a grant from the state government of $177,000 to assist them. The wetland was initiated. The project is a success and has turned the previous eyesore into a peaceful natural pond for the public. The wetland is now providing benefits for the harbour. Got a dual project here. One is that it filters the water from the road before it enters the harbour. And the second one is that we've got a water reuse scheme where we're collecting water from the residential drainage channel, which is on this side of the site, use it on the playing field next door, and the surplus that we take out of the canal, we put back through the pond to clean that as well. So there's a, a dual purpose in the process. The, the harvesting of out of the stormwater guarantees we're getting a constant flow in the main pond, even though we haven't had rainfall. The combination of the stormwater harvesting and wetland improvements help achieving the maximum environmental outcome. The solution we've come up here with is a lot more practical. Um, the original design was completed in about 2012, 2013, and a lot of things have changed since then. And the alternative design we came up with is to preserve the existing infrastructure as natural environment as much as we could. So what we decided was to leave all the original banks, leave the original base and elevate the water level. Our alternative design was to work with nature rather than against it. The work with nature philosophy minimized the waste generated and it required less demolition as well. Um, we were able to make calls as to where around the sites we could reuse those materials. We mulched a lot of things, reused it in all of the, uh, the areas around this, around the wetland and also the surrounding park and, um, and made the most of what was a, uh, be beneficial to the area. Rather than going to the landfill, Excavated spoil from the wetland was screened to separate the plastics and then mixed with clean soil to be reused for embankment construction. Bush waste was also used as mulch for landscaping and we engaged over 4,000 indigenous plants to rehabilitate around the wetland. The optimal stormwater philosophy is always to reuse, recycle and reduce. However, in order to achieve the maximum environmental benefits, we also need to know what's happening in the catchment. It's important to note that all stormwater is polluted and every single stormwater is going to be containing sediments, gross pollution and the nutrients of nitrogen and phosphorus. Stormwater pollutants contains total suspended solids, total nitrogen, total phosphorus and gross pollutants. But to treat them, a treatment train is required which should include both uh, primary treatment and secondary treatment. And here we have a good example where we have to have the physical screening of the gross pollution trap followed by the green infrastructure of the con spill control basin which is our wetland 
the gross pollution traps capturing the main large gross pollutants larger than a millimeter so we're talking all your plastics all your sediments it will let through nitrogen and phosphorus which makes it really important to have a treatment train and as part of that we've got our wetland which is um, full of plants which will then strip out a lot of the finer sediments and silts and the nitrogen and phosphorus. With the combination of GPTs and the green infrastructure, the polluted runoff from the upstream catchment can be treated. Optimal audited the GPTs on site and constructed improvement rectifications as part of the project, so the treatment frame is fully activated. The nature that it brings back here, it's not just about the the um, importance of treating the stormwater, but it's about creating an ecological habitat and allowing the community to uh, enjoy this habitat. The local community has been involved in the rehabilitation progress of the wetland. Walking around Blackmore Oval wetlands and you'll see these wild animal boxes. Guess who made it? This is the, this is the box that was used uh, locally here. So it's for bats, this is the entry and exit hole. This is a lid so that they can be inspected or cleaned. You can, if you look around in the trees up high, you can see these in small. The uh, wildlife people are quite happy for various species to use one box. Yeah. I think yep. I painted a couple of them. <laughs> With the great support of the local community, more residents are going to enjoy the outcomes of this project. The place for old blogs to come around and have a cup of tea and a bit of a chat. Just, uh, just enjoy the company really. Just, yeah. I ride my bike through here all the time. The bike part's getting renewed at the moment. Uh, the new bridge over the canal is great. So yeah, I like that. And I know a lot of people use it. It's a much better area now. Urban stormwater management not only regards the stormwater runoff as a liability, but also as a resource to harvest on site, which you can see here in Black Oval. For example, if we use potable water for irrigation purpose, the water comes from the dam. Just imagine the storm water from the dam all the way to the treatment facilities, then pump all the way here, but we use it just for irrigation purpose. Such a high level of energy involved in this process. But it makes so much sense if we can have some water locally. For example, the water comes from the sky are free, and plenty of them is more than what we need to have here. In Sydney area, the annual precipitation is more than a thousand mils. So plenty of water we can use as a source. If we can harvest this stone water as a source, then send to the treatment room and store it in the tank and we use this one for irrigation, it will dramatically reduce the energy consumption during the whole process. We have faced many challenges during the construction phase to ensure that the housing system is easy to operate and maintain. Due to the high salinity issues connecting with the tidal water, a salinity sensor has been installed, and we also created a bypass for the salty water in the resume. By utilizing the programmable logic control unit, the housing system can smart bypass salty water automatically. We also designed the pump wheel to include a primary treatment GPT to treat liters in the residential drain channel as well as protect the treatment system. Automatic backwash filter and a powerful UV when considered as part of the treatment strain to guarantee the quality of recycled stormwater. When the environment and engineering meet each other, the chemistry creates a much better living place. Let's see the Black Marvel opening day attended by the local community, especially the next generation. Um, all of the local residents who've come along today, most importantly of all, all of the outstanding children from Rose Body, can we give them a round of applause? <laughs> that come along to, to learn about sustainability and about the benefits of this project. The function of urban wetlands is not only about stormwater treatment, it is also providing a classroom for the students to learn about nature and sustainability. We were just here earlier and a lot of school children came um, with plastic buckets and nets and they picked up different wildlife, they picked up, they picked up a scoop of the water and they were able to count how many bugs there were in there and that was an indication of a healthy uh, environment. And we've created a habitat here, um, not just for the flora and fauna but we've created it for the people 
and the education starting with school children all the way to um, engineers is, is paramount in our society and we're, we're all progressing down a path where environmental engineering will become more part of everyday life 